Just a heads up, everybody, if you do not like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel right now, Konami's gonna ban your favorite card and Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links in this new Forbidden and Limited list. So what are you doing? Like and subscribe right now. What's up, everybody? Watt007 here, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Forbidden and Limited list and skill balance changes that happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Now, I woke up just a few minutes ago. I was actually snoozing, taking a little bit of a nap. It was actually an unintentional nap. I wasn't planning to do so, but I got some rest but due to that my eyes are looking a little bloodshot and depending on how this goes my reaction might be a little mundane compared to normal because of the fact that I did get woken up by discord for the fact that this new band list is out and then on top of that there's a little bit of some spoilers because I woke up because of that notification so some of my reactions might be a little mundane but from what I did see about this band list already there's some crazy stuff going on I think Konami is finally ready to do a new meta in Yu-Gi-Oh doings because some of the cards that I did see did get hit that are pretty important for some of the most popular decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. But still, I kind of don't know if that is going to be the case or not, simply for the fact that I have not seen the Forbidden and Limited list just yet, but let's go take a look at the stuff right here because this seems to be pretty spicy and I'm very curious to see what they're going to be changing, especially when it comes to the skills, guys. I didn't get spoiled on the skills yet and I have absolutely no clue what's going to be popped for the skills, but some of the cards that didn't get hit is pretty insane, but let's go get into it. But yeah, let's go get into it because it seems like Konami is finally ready to start a new meta in Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling. So let's just go take a look at this new stuff right here. So we're going to take a look at these skill balance changes first. It looks like that the changes are going to be happening sometime in between July 17 and 19 when we update to 4.9. And let's go take a look at the new skills. Let's go click about the skill balancing. Oh, okay. We got some interesting stuff going on over here. So the rebalancing of the skill will be applied to the game by updating to 4.9. However, please note the skill details page will not be updated, uh, will not be changed with the update. Okay, so actually, I think this is actually going to be happening. Okay, so the change is still going to be happening around this point, but then also the um, changes for the skills are going to be forced to be happening on the 27th. Okay. Looks like we're going to be getting a lot of changes right here. So first of all, Draw Set Spell and Trap. The skill is getting a harder activation condition, as having the skill and only one Spell and Trap card in the deck enabled players to automatically draw that Spell and Trap. This is interesting right here for a couple reasons, in my opinion. First of all... I do not remember seeing that many decks in Duel Links that abused uh, Draw, Sense, Spell, and Trap. Let me know in the comment section down below on which deck that did abuse this skill, because like I said, I woke up not too long ago, so maybe I'm missing the deck from the top of my head, but I do not remember a deck that abused this skill. And if I am correct on that there isn't any deck that's been abusing this skill, maybe there's going to be a deck that is coming soon that barely needs any Spell and Trap cards in order to play. And, like, they're just afraid that that's going to get abused, so they need to nerf the Draw Set Spell and Trap before adding a brand new broken deck when it comes to that. But that's interesting. It's very interesting right here. Another thing that's interesting right here is that Cyber Style is also getting hit. We're giving the skill harder activation and condition and restricting the user to fusion summoning. So that's interesting right here. I don't think that Cyber Dragons are going to still get like any hits because of this. Because if it is just making it to where they only could fusion summon still, the Cyber Dragon decks are not going to really care about this too much. But at the same time, maybe this is like just a nerf that they're just doing now just in case of maybe Xyz Summoning that's going to be coming out later. They just want to make sure that Cyber Style won't be able to get abused with it when Xyz Summoning come out. Something like that, I'm going to assume. But yeah, Cyber Style, very interesting. That's getting hit right now because we'll have to read the uh, skip, uh, text changes because at least for the reasoning on hitting it, I don't think it's going to hurt the Cyber Dragon deck list. Tuning, this skill will be strengthened to let players wield the power of Junk Synchron decks. That's cool to see. I can't wait to see what the change is going to be. I do not mind make a junk synchron a little bit more powerful. It's an awesome card. Uh, and then we have Ultimate Dragon. Since Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon has become available for level of rewards, we'll strengthen the skill to compensate. That's also pretty cool too. So let's go take a look at the update skills right here. Wait, okay. Um hold up. Anyways, let's go read this. Okay, because I saw that the activation condition for Straw Sense Bell and Trap was still on um, 1000. Okay, interesting. Can't be used each time your light points decrease by a thousand. In the draw phase, instead of conducting your normal draw, draw a random spell and trap card. This skill will only activate if you begin the duel with a deck that has three or more spell and trap cards with different names. Okay, so this nerf is honestly not that bad whatsoever. Um, I mean, you can still, you know, utilize Cosmic Cyclone to force that a thousand light points to, you know, happen to lose, or you can use Cosmic Cyclone the cost of it 
when activating is going to take you a thousand life points to get triggered straw set spell and trap right away not too shabby whatsoever and yeah due to this change you won't be able to abuse the skill by making it to where like the game said it's going to get a harder activation activation condition so that you can't draw into the one spell and trap card that you absolutely need and since you can't draw into that one exact spell and trap card in your deck because you're only rocking one copy of said spell and trap card you're not gonna be able to do that anymore due to this change so it's just making it to where this uh, skill won't be abusable in the future and whatnot but like i said i don't remember any deck specifically that was utilizing the skill i think that's just like a little like what would you call like a forewarning that a potential deck in Duel Links is going to be coming soon that would be able to abuse uh, this skill? I don't really know though, but yeah, let me know in the comment section down below what deck that did abuse Draw Set Spawn Trap because I do not remember from the top of my head. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Cyber Style. Can be used if your life points are 2,000 or below. Play up to two Proto Cyber Dragon in attack position from outside of your deck. If your life points are at 1,000 or below, you can play up to three Proto Cyber Dragon in attack position from outside your deck. Pro Cyber Dragon played with this skill cannot be tributed and while they're face up on the field you cannot special summon except for fusion summoning nor attack except with fusion monsters this skill can only be used once per duel so cyber dragons are still going to be able to use cyber style perfectly fine but clearly this is going to be a change to make sure that one when xc summoning comes out into you your duel like xc summoning won't be able to abuse cyber style and then on top of that they're just making sure that this skill just won't be abusable whatsoever because when cyber style first came out and you get duel like people abused it for the fact that the game still allowed you to tribute off the proto cyber dragons you summoned with this so they did that change to make it to where you couldn't do that anymore and then now they're making a change again to make sure that you won't be able to abuse the skill with uh, xc summoning when it comes out in yukio dueling so this makes a lot of sense understandable change but from what i can tell right here i think cyber dragons are still going to be okay and they do not need to worry too much when it comes to the skill next up we're going to take a look at tuning right here can be used when your life points decrease by a thousand instead of conducting your normal draw draw one synchro tuner monster of your choice from your deck then send the top card of your deck to the graveyard if you begin to duel with three or more junk effect monsters in your deck add speed warrior from outside your deck to the graveyard the skill can only be used once per duel this is actually an awesome change right here oh my goodness and honestly this is not too shabby whatsoever it's an effect that triggers when you lose a thousand life points so again it has that cosmic cyclone activation so you can trigger cosmic cyclone and then on your following turn you can trigger the skill you get to choose any one of your synchron tuner monsters from your choice from your deck which is insane because it's basically a destiny draw for your synchron monsters and then on top of that if you have a bunch of junk effect monsters in your deck you can send a speed warrior from outside your deck to the graveyard so that you can get the automatic 5,000 not 5,000 like I said I'm pretty tight right now but you get that automatic um you know synchro summon into a five star synchro monster so that's actually really cool right here I think tuning might be a little bit better than what grows in the graveyard uh because of the fact that even though you do need to lose life points to trigger this skill you still get to no matter what draw into the junk synchron monster or to the junk monster that you need to draw into and then on top of that you can just pitch your speed warrior into the graveyard if you have three or more junk effect monsters in your deck so if you're just rocking three copies of junk synchron you're good to go this is a really good skill i like the skill a lot and i can't wait to see what people are going to do with the skill because this skill is not too bad whatsoever that's awesome and last but not least with the skill changes we're going to take a look at ultimate dragons at the beginning of a duel add blue eyes ultimate dragon neo blue eyes ultimate dragon and blue eyes twin burst dragon to your extra deck can be used on turn three and onwards by revealing two blue eyes white dragon in your hand to your opponent add polymerization to your hand from outside your deck the skill can only be used once per duel so one thing that's actually pretty funny about the Ultimate Dragon's text change is the fact that Konami was saying that, oh yeah, since Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links will strengthen this skill to compensate. But what they didn't mention is that they're also making it to where we now can have access to Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon. So as you guys know, with my leak video, I was talking about that Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon did get leaked and is an NPC card. But would you look at that? It now can be used with the Ultimate Dragon skill. That's actually hilarious that Konami is like, yeah, we're going to change this, but then slowly add the fact that you can add Blue Eyes Twin vs. Dragon to your extra deck. That's actually really cool. I like that a lot. So, yeah, we can now have access to Blue Eyes Twin vs. Dragon, and then on top of that, Ultimate Dragons uh, will have Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in the extra deck. That's actually really crazy right here, and that is a super cool skill change. I like that a lot. And that's going to be it when it comes to the skill rebalancing. Let's go take a look at the Forbidden and Limited list. And I'm going to guess most of you guys know how this works. But here, yeah, let me click this right here. Oh, spoilers. Spoilers right there. 
Um, but let me go to give you guys a little like rundown with how the limited list works for you guys that don't know. So basically there is forbidden limited one, two, and three. Every time a card gets put onto limited one, two, or three, that just means that you only can play X amount of cards from that entire list. So for example, since there's a bunch of different cards in limited three, you only can play three cards from that entire list in your deck and then etc. for two and one. And then if it's forbidden, it can't be used whatsoever. I believe there's still no cards in Duel Links that is forbidden yet. So we still only have limited one, two, and three. But yeah, let's go take a look at what's going to be popping with the limited shenanigans. And as you guys can see right here, we already have some shenanigans right here. Limited one, only one card from limited list can be added or included in your deck. Type zero magic crusher and give and take are both going to get on the limited list, which is very interesting because these cards are actually not see, they don't see that much play, but I know that these cards can be abusable. For example, I've been actually seeing give and take in some um, Neo's fusion decks because this card states special summon one monster from your graveyard to your opponent's side of the field at defense position, increase level one monster you control by the level of special summon monsters in the end phase. Uh, there's actually a really cool combo that people are doing is that they're playing a raw disciple Neo deck where they activate Neo's Fusion, pitch Raw Disciple to the graveyard, synchro, not synchro summon, fusion summon into uh, Brave Neos, and then use Give and Take to special summon the Raw Disciple in the graveyard thanks to Neo's Fusion onto their field, and then Raw Disciple stops your opponent from special summoning. And also, the game literally says this right here, we're limiting this card as it allows players to prevent their opponent from special summoning monsters by special summoning Raw Disciple to your opponent's side of the field. Man, I wish I made a video on the Raw Disciple shenanigans earlier, because a lot of people were actually sending me some of their deck lists on doing this cheesy combo, and yeah, I wish I made a video on it because as you guys can see, give and take is on the limits of the list because of that. So that's crazy. Now type zero magic crusher. I don't I have not seen this card before, so this is actually kind of interesting. This is a continuous trap card that states this card one spell card from your hand will inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent's life points. And the game is claiming the reason why we're limiting this card as using this card along with uh, the effect to add spell cards in the graveyard to the hand allowed players to win the duel by dealing effect damage too easily. That's interesting right there. So it sounds like people were able to find a abusable loop to keep doing this over and over and over again to get an automatic win. I've never went against this deck before, but that is interesting to see that this got limited. And you know what? I'm glad I never went against this uh, deck before, and I'm glad that's going to be harder for that deck to win for the fact that this card's now going to get onto the limited list. Very, very interesting right there. Good hits right here. A lot of just cheese abusable stuff that people can do. So they're just like, yeah, let's throw that stuff in the limited list so we don't have that shenanigans happening. Next up on the limited one list, that's it for the limited one list. Let's go take a look at the limited two list. So on the limited two list, Magician's Rod is finally getting hit, boys. Let's go. I am happy about this. This is going to hurt Dark Magician so much because of the fact that Magician's Rod was their main search card to get the deck going. And now Dark Magician is not going to be able to rock uh, Magician of Dark Illusion, which is going to hurt the deck's um, you know power because a Magician of Dark Illusion was really good for the fact that you could, every time you activated the spell card, you can special summon a Dark Magician from your graveyard and just get a lot of board presence. But now you're going to have to stop utilizing that card and now rock Magician's Rod. And since Magician's Rod is on limited two now, um, you only can rock two copies of this card. And and then on top of that, you can't play Dark Illusion, so it's going to hurt the consistency and power of the deck. I'm happy about this hit. This hit's going to hurt Dark Magician a lot, in my opinion. So, I'm happy about that, because don't get me wrong, Dark Magician was the, one of those decks that, like, as time went on, I learned how to play against it a lot better than I did before when it first was, you know, popular. But it was still an annoying deck to play against, so I'm okay with this deck getting hit on the ban list. That is for sure. So, Magician's Rod, I'm okay with that. Next up, we're going to be getting... Hey, let's go! you Shiranis, dude. I hate this deck, bro. I like an awesome this was myself once, but then, you know, swear it right afterwards. Hopefully I remember to edit that post-editing so YouTube does demonetize me. Anyways, though, I'm so happy that Squire Saga is on the semi-limited list, because in any way that this deck can get hit, I'm perfectly okay with it, because as most of you guys know that are subscribers of mine, I hate this deck with the passion, with the fiery passion, and I'm so happy that this card's gonna get hit right here. Um, I'm trying to remember, though. Let me go take a look at the current Forbidden and Limited list real quick, so I can see which cards did already get hit yo i'm actually so happy for the fact that uh squire is actually going to be getting hit on the semi-limit list so i completely forgot that spectacle sword was on the semi-limit list but now that squire is going to be on the semi-limit list 
that's going to mean that this deck cannot rock Squire and Spectacle Sword, and they're either going to have to rock one Squire or one Spectacle Sword, or not rock Squire at all, and use two copies Spectacle Sword. So this is going to hurt the deck a lot, because this was one of the cards that really made the deck consistent, because if this card got banished, you can draw a card and then discard a card. It was also a four-star monster, so you can go into a Secret Summon of a six-star, um, you know, Shrani monster, or if you use level augmentation, you could have boosted up Squire to a level 8 to go into Sun Saga. So the fact that this card is getting hit on the semi limitless is going to hurt the deck a lot more which is just awesome i'm actually really happy about that also another reason why that this card's going to get hit is like when this card's normal somebody can special special sword from her hand or deck but you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn so yeah what probably is going to happen is that people are going to rock one square and one special sword and that's going to be about it and this is going to hurt the consistency of the deck i think the deck can still be played but the fact that you're going to only be able to rock one of each of these cards now is going to hurt the deck a lot and especially once we get a brand new meta deck in an upcoming box I think that this is going to be the time where this deck finally gets washes out because I think the deck can still be kind of played with one copy of each but if yeah like I said if we get a brand new deck if you get dual eggs it could probably just outclass this deck because it won't be handicapped by the ban list yet because that's kind of how Konami likes to do things but I'm so happy about this hit I hate this deck so much I'm so 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 happy about this man let's go Next up on the limited two list, it looks like Cybernetic Overflow is getting hit. Wow, so they also want uh, Cyber Dragons to get oofed up right here. We're limiting this card as it allows players to consistently end duels by destroying several opponent's cards, then fusion summoning. I'm okay with it. Cyber Dragons wasn't a deck that really made me mad, but at the same time, I'm okay with the card or the deck getting hit because it wasn't a deck that I played and it has been around for a very long time. What I could tell with this ban list is that they're just finally getting rid of all these meta decks that have been meta for a very, very long time. And it does seem like that soon we're probably going to get a broken main box. So, yeah, I'm going to just assume that they're doing this ban list because they're going to release a broken main box. That's going to add a bunch of broken decks into the game. And it's like, let's go nerf all these new meta decks. Let's get some new meta decks on deck. And then let's go make some quiche. Let's go make some money. That's literally what this ban list is. But, yeah, I'm okay with all these meta decks getting hit because it's going to be nice to see that we're going to get a new meta very soon. Also, we're going to be seeing, wow, Dragoonity Divine Lance. This card is going to be limited to prevent Dragoonity decks from having access to generic limited two cards see i've seen dragonity here and there i think i saw a little bit of it during the grand uh not grand prix but in the previous like kc cup event or kc cup tournament so i guess i'm not too too surprised about it but i don't think dragonities was like that big of a deal maybe they're gonna get some new support in a future box and i'm just hitting this uh, card now but like yeah, I don't know why they're hitting it, because I've seen this deck recently, but I don't think it was, like, broken by any means, but, okay, whatever, it's not a deck that I play, I don't care, that's a, fine with me, fine with me, sorry for all you good you players to play that deck. And then we also have Luna Light Crimson Fox going to be getting um, limited. It was made... Oh, yeah. So we're limiting this card as it made highly risky players summon a monster in attack position. Oh, yeah. It made it highly risky for players summon a monster attack position. So the thing that sucks about this card getting hit on the seven, um, limited two list is that you now cannot rock this card in Neo's Fusion anymore. That sucks because I've used this combo before, but it's still not that big of a deal to me. It's understandable too because it was a pretty busted combo. The fact that your opponent can summon a monster, you play Neil's Fusion, summon uh, a Brave Neil's for 2600 attack, and then your opponent has zero attack right here. That yeah, Crimson Fox is just too good. And then on top of that, this was also used in Lunar Lights, and now Lunar Lights are going to have a little bit of a harder time for uh, utilizing this card. And now Lunar Lights can't play on uh, Neos Fusion Lunar Lights if they want to play Crimson Fox. They'll just have to play pure Lunar Lights. But yeah, I think pure Lunar Lights will be fine, and this hit was mostly just for the Neos Fusion builds that either teched in Crimson Fox or played both Lunar Lights and Neos Fusion in the same deck. But yeah, understandable hit right here. That's reasonable. And then next up right here, we have Crystron Impact. Wow, okay. So this card was actually one of the good ones for Crystrons. And the fact that this getting hit on the limited two list is not too shabby whatsoever. I'm trying to remember though, because here's the thing, because Crystrons, um, at least from Duel Links meta, what they said, it's like the tier one deck in the game. But you don't see this deck that much in um, climbing in rank PP, because it is a very expensive deck. Uh, I remember that this card is pretty toxic because yeah, you just banish one of your uh, Crystron monsters, or if one of your Crystron monsters is banished, you can special summon it. And then uh, Crystron Impact, changes all the uh, opponent's monsters to defense vision with zero attack or zero defense i mean so it was a toxic card and you couldn't like get over your opponent's christian monsters into this card um so it's interesting to see it on these on limited two lists but yeah i haven't seen like christians in a while and due to that i don't remember if they did play any of the limited two cards from the limited two list like the econs you know tth etc but no it's nice to see the christians are getting hit because yeah it's been a tier one deck for a while now 
and then it looks like that's it for the limited two let's move on to limited three. Oh, oh, oh okay okay that's actually interesting right here so looks like spectacle sword is going to be moving to the limited two list right here or it's going from limited two to limited three Dang it, Konami, you had my hopes up. You had my hopes up, man. I should I actually should have read this right here. Limiting players, or limiting this card for players from Zico Summoning uh, using a zero card. Anyways, wow, okay, that sucks right here. So they're gonna make it to where Spectacle Sword is gonna be on limited three, and then Squire's gonna be on limited two. So yes, it's still gonna be harder to play bootleg six sands because of the fact that this card is gonna get on the limited two list. But if all they're doing is just swapping Squire and Spectacle Sword around, the deck is still going to be as just, or it's going to still be pretty powerful as it was before. It's just going to be slightly harder to go into the combos because you now have two of this guy. But man, I would have loved if they had Spectacle Sword still on the semi limit list and Squire on the semi limit list. Bro, you had my hopes up, Konami. Come on, man. Why? This deck hates me so much, bro. I just wanted to die, bro. These zombies don't want to die, though. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on. Dang it, man, this deck doesn't want to go away, bro. It's going to haunt me in my dreams. Wow. Oh, oh my god. Okay. That's crazy, too. No longer on the list. Magician and Dark Illusion. This card is going to be unlimited as Magician's Rod has been limited in this place. So it looks like Dark Magician is still going to be pretty good. So this is actually wild that Dark Magician and Dark Illusion is no longer on the list. Because everything that I said earlier about Magician's Rod doesn't really matter that much anymore. For the fact that, like... Like I said, this deck was, or Dark Magician was going to get hurt really, really bad for the fact if both Dark Illusion and Magician's Rod was both on the 17 limited two list. But now that Dark Illusion is off of the ban list completely, this does, or my thoughts and opinions on this doesn't matter anymore. The only thing I could say now is that Dark Magician is still going to be played, but with Magician's Rod on limited two, it's still going to make it a little bit harder to go into the combos that you need to go into with the deck. It is going to be less consistent now, but it's still going to be pretty, or it's still going to be a pretty good deck for Magician Rod getting limited to limited to two. So that's interesting right there. That is very, very interesting right there. So you can still play Dark Illusion and Magician's Rod in the deck. What's also interesting to see is that Amazon Princess is now no longer on the list. I don't think Amazon or Amazonist is going to make a comeback for the fact that it's getting off the ban list, but it is interesting to see that this card's going to be off the ban list. Maybe we'll get some new Amazon support in the future box, and then maybe Princess could just be busted right here. But this card's limited, unlimited as the power level is acceptable in the current metagame. But yeah, hopefully Amazon doesn't come back though, because I don't like this deck. But yeah, it's cool to see that, you know, Princess is finally off the ban list. What an interesting ban list. So on paper, it seems like that they're making these meta decks, you know, go away and not be meta anymore but literally magicians and bootleg six sands for now are still going to be pretty good i think cyber dragons are still going to be fine even though this overflow is at the limit no actually i don't think overflow actually wait hold up okay so i was just checking the uh you know ban list real quick to see if cyber load fusion was on the limited two list which it is and so yeah when it comes to this ban list right here on paper it seems like that they are like hitting all these meta decks and making them not meta anymore but literally all this does is just tickle them still like all these decks are still going to be pretty usable in my opinion but at the same time, like the all these hits do hurt the decks. Don't get me wrong. It's gonna make Dark Condition less consistent. It's gonna make Bootleg Six Sand less consistent. Cyber Overflow getting hit means that Cyber Dragon's gonna have a little harder time to get board presence um, on the field. But like at the same time, it doesn't change the meta decks that much at all. Like all these changes are just like tickling the deck still. Now, like I said, if Konami's gonna add a new box into the game that has a bunch of meta decks that, or if they add a new box into the game that add a bunch of really powerful decks in it, these current meta decks are gonna get washed out for sure. Cause these new, cause if the new decks are super powerful and since they're brand new to the game, none of the cards are gonna be on the limited list yet. And since they're not gonna be on the limited list yet, it's gonna make it to where these decks are gonna be powerful and have that advantage over all of the current meta decks and have access to the broken limited two cards, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So like if we get some good decks, they're definitely gonna wash out these stuff. But if we don't get any good decks in the next box, all the, the meta is still gonna be pretty much the same, but like at the same time, rogue decks will just have a little easier time getting over these, you know, decks right here. But yeah, super, super, super super interesting band list that's for sure the skill balances are interesting and on top of that the new uh you know cards are interesting too what an interesting band list review i didn't expect this band list review to be so long but if you guys enjoyed and you watched to the end of this video you know what to do leave a like in the video down below and subscribe to my youtube channel for more doing content let me know what you guys think about the band list in the comment section down below but that was an interesting band list i'm probably gonna clickbait this video making it be like oh my god it's a crazy band list but 
I, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't think it's going to make that much of an impact as it looks like it will, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see when it gets added into Yu-Gi-Oh! Links. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll go see you guys next one. Adios, everybody.